Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we share stories of personal paranormal history and tell stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. With me always is your other host, Bryce Johnson, and your producer, Riley Bray. And guess what, kids? It's mailbag time. All right. That's right. We have another Listener Files episode. We teased at the end of last week's episode. We did. And with us today, we have last week's guest, Edie Patterson. Hi. She was in the studio for an entire week. Just <laughs> How was your week? Did any large hairy men try to break into the clubhouse and scare you? No, but uh, I did. Keep looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> gotta keep looking for Bigfoot. Whatever you do, just keep looking, looking for Bigfoot. Bigfoot. I'm gonna Wait. grab some lunch, just looking for Bigfoot. We'll be back in a week. You just keep looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> uh, and with Edie, he was here last week. He we was not him. allowed to speak. He's no. here to answer all of your listener files. Fan favorite. Fan favorite, Kevin Kirkpatrick. <laughs> Hi, hey. I'm here to answer all of their <laughs> listener yes. files. Yeah, yes. you're going to talk to these I people the about answers. the. You're a spiritual and uh, psychedelic guru. So I'm a yeah. yeah. guru. It's your turn, <laughs> listeners, to tell the stories of high strangeness. And listen, we got a big old mailbag this week. Yeah. What a- <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> we got a big old mailbag, so we're going to dive right in. Michael took a silly pill. I took a silly pill. It was called ecstasy. <laughs> Michael took a rage shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who rage shit? Who rage shit while we were gone? <laughs> it was me. Um, I'm still mad about that commercial yeah. audition that I didn't book. <laughs> okay, let's dig into this mailbag. Yes. Right? Right. Right, guys? For the first time. I'm I can't wait for the restarting. first letter. We <laughs> might have just wasted our time reading one we already did. Yeah. <laughs> Let's well, get into happens. that fresh mail. All right. Fresh here's mail. that fresh. Mm. Can I paint a super quick picture for yes. your listeners? Yeah. yeah. Bryce is handsome. Oh, today. Kevin. He's, he's got this. Look. People, he's got this. Like big Elvisy swooshy Ooh, hair, thank you. With yeah. one little tendril curling down towards his tendril, I like deep that. set blue eyes. <laughs> deep set. Although I forgot well, to tell you. Usually that... he's in a dirty hat and you know a giant cast. <laughs> yeah. And today he is turned out. He's got well, a I knew you slick were coming, so. jacket on and some striped socks. Oh, Kevin, mm. you're making me blush. I'm gonna just. He looks right. good. Thank looks you. Good. Thank you, Bigfoot Collectors Club. The lavender bomber. Mm-hmm. Appreciate good all color. of you. All right. God yeah. bless you. Good for you, Bryce. Okay. This one is called <laughs> Hey Jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> this one is Game Lang of This one is called Weird Ghostly Post Suicide Experiences. Ooh. And I wanna warn you guys, this one is a little heavy. Ooh. So we're getting the 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 heavy one out of the way. We're doing the heavy lifting first. Sure. DMA. Hey guys, my boyfriend Brian and I love your podcast, and I especially love hearing the emails from other listeners, so I thought I would share some of my own strange paranormal experiences. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Since we were kids, Brian and I both had very separate paranormal histories. He grew up in an extremely haunted house in upstate New York. I had parents that were very open to the extra-dimensional, paranormal, weird, and had also lived in a house that has weird happenings rather frequently. Shadows, noises, and the standard creepiness were normal occurrences, so neither of us are strangers to the odd, inexplicable experiences. It wouldn't be until this past summer that we would experience one of the creepiest things that has ever happened to me. Mm. Not Brian? We'll find out. Backtrack a little bit. We both had been living with my grandparents for about a year. Now, I'm telling you, a lot of these emails are about grandparents. Who is this from? I this just want is a picture. from... Male, female. It's a female, I believe, and her name is Natasha. Uh, Russian. Last January, my grandfather's health had quickly deteriorated after a bad fall. So instead of sleeping upstairs in his bedroom with my grandmother, he spent many months sleeping on a temporary bed in our living room so he could recover without risk of falling down the stairs. However, about a month into his new living situation, he would wake up in the middle of the night in total panic, calling out for my grandmother. In absolute terror, because he would see a shadowy figure walking up to our front door with large antlers on top of its head. Oh, that's creepy. He would hear voices. He would be very confused about time. The rest of us attributed these sightings to his deteriorating health, and he was diagnosed with a form of dementia and thought 
nothing of them, trying to comfort him as best as we could. But his sightings became more frequent and became, and he fell into a deepening depression over the course of about six months. Mm. It would be in July that we would wake up one morning to find that he had taken his own life oh. by hanging himself in our basement while the rest of us slept. Oh. That's Glad the heavy I didn't part. make that joke yeah. earlier. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, we're very sorry for your loss, Natasha. That's that terrible. is rough. Ooh, Brutal. Um, so the family was grieving. I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. Um, and then... Uh, they started to, Brian and I began experiencing strange things ourselves after a few weeks after. Uh, my grandfather had a very distinctive cough that we would hear emanating from the basement at all times of day. At night, we could hear shuffling in the kitchen when no one was there. We would see faint shadows moving about. But we assumed that, because of the recent events and grief, that it was our minds adjusting to the stress. About a week after his death, I was experiencing regular nightmares at the time. I was jolted awake around 8 a.m. by a man's voice, a voice I did not know, sternly saying my name, but assumed it was just a nightmare and ignored it. About a minute later, Brian jolted awake as well with a sheer look on his face saying, I just heard a woman say my name in my ear. Hmm. And I mean, the voices were distinct, very clear, and sounded as though they were right next to us. By now, I am in full panic mode. Chills run down my spine, and I bolt out of bed, grab a smudge stick, and begin staging my room. My windows are shut, and I'm quietly trying to process what's happened when the smoke blows a perfect smoke ring. I hold my breath and move my hand towards it, and it moves away from my hand as though it's playing a game with me. Brian and I look at each other wide-eyed. This spirit or energy was not my grandfather. Since scattering his ashes, we have not experienced any other strange things. But it has made me wonder if the things my grandfather was seeing before his death were because of his dementia diagnosis, or if they were truly there. Were the voices he was hearing because of his death? Or had the house been more susceptible to the paranormal activity because of the stress he had been going through? Unsure, but I have no logical explanation for all of this. Keep doing awesome stuff, you guys. It's uplifting and equally creepy listening to your podcast, Natasha. Mm. That's a, wow, Ooh, that's, that's awesome. an intense one. That's a that's a heavy one. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what do wow. you guys think? That's a the 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 the. Obviously, there's some dementia going on, so these things can be explained. However, the stuff happening post right the grandfather. That's that a, stuff is the most um, affecting to me because. Once when I was in high school, and I even forgot to tell you guys this one, I was up so late studying for a test, and in my ear, I heard someone scream my name Ooh. to the point that I went and woke up my mom and uh, asked her, like, did one of you just yell my name? And I still don't – I always attributed it to just utter exhaustion. Oof. Yeah. But, yeah, I've had that thing she's talking about, and it's really, really weird and really scary. And weird because her boyfriend heard a woman's name, which is strange. A woman's voice. A woman's voice, sorry. Yeah. I imagine they were just laying in bed asleep screaming each other's names, and that's why he heard a woman (laughs) and she heard a man. (laughs) Oh, man, it's tough, though. But I think a lot of, like, you know, obviously the family is is going through grief and a lot of stress, and I think that that can, like heighten activity in for the sure. house for mm. sure for sure and even the illness and the disease can attract and mm-hmm. heighten some activity in the house as well so um i i don't know if they're still in that home or whatever but i would recommend bringing in somebody to really do a nice cleansing and a binding on that space and really get cast out the negative energy and uh, maybe help if it was, she said it wasn't her grandfather, but the coughing and the shuffling around, maybe. Uh, but just kind of wh- whoever's living in that house now, I think it's a good idea. This is my uh, un- unqualified advice. To, let's uh, let's get that energy reset. Yeah. set there. Get, nice get rid of the, the moose man. Yeah, get rid of that. I know. Antler I because the antlers. I was looking up a video. Have you ever seen that weird, creepy video of a car driving in the middle of the night, and he sees all those men in the black in the middle of the road? You know which no, one I'm talking no. about? No. Oh my god, it's really creepy. I'm, I, what? I can't like so. It was a guy driving, and then he started videoing. Yeah, it's like, uh, and then this thing with uh, antlers, almost like a cult thing, kind of. Uh, but here, I'll, I, I wish I could find the original video. This guy's like doing a thing on the video, but as you can see, he like runs into all these like weird like oh. things. Wait. That, have so you seen that video? Reenactment. This is a reenactment. No, of no. And then there's no. like a there's like a th- flare in the back. And oh. then what the hell is that? And then some like thing with antlers comes up at the oh. end, like some deer creature. 
Um, oh my God, I wish I could. Oh yeah, well here he comes. Ready? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. It's almost like some like it, you. Um, oh, they're doing it in well, slow if you motion. Would, if you would hold your laptop still. Uh, I gotta find the original. Anyway, I'll find oh, a better please, one. Please send show that us link. We're gonna yeah. post it. Whatever the hell yeah. it is. Okay. Uh, do you want me to read the next one while you're doing that, Bryce? Uh, yes. Okay. Cool. I'll jump into the next one. All right. Cool. This is from listener Kelsey Bryce. Yes. Oh, here we go. Okay. Hi, Bryce, Michael, and Riley. I have lots of... Oh, you're flattering, Riley. (laughs) I've had a lot of strange encounters with ghost entities throughout my life, but only one or two that could make a good standalone story. So here it goes. I was home from college for the summer in a very rural mid-Missouri, so I love all of Michael's KC shout-outs. What up? Shout out, KC. <laughs> Keep looking for me. Fun. Keep looking looking for me. Me. Oh, I found it. Do you want me to do ju- Okay, here we go. Sorry. <laughs> the pacing is excellent on I this know, episode. Sorry. Okay, this is, cra- <laughs> this is crazy, though. Okay, this is the what the fuck Kelsey, video I'm video. sorry. We're going to have to take a pause. All right, so I'm just going to... All right. So, Car- can you everybody see? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Except everyone this listening. This is great for a podcast. We're watching a <laughs> oh. video. <laughs> Okay, so there's oh, a car driving, weird. and it looks like businessmen with briefcases are running in the headlights <laughs> with, into with the no forest. Faces. They have no faces, and then they line up, right? Look at that! What, what the hell? They have. They literally have. There's a briefcases. fire on the mountainside. What the fuck was that? Right. Oh. Wait. Where's the? Where's? Come on! I'm, I should have Antler Man. Come yeah, on, Antler, Antler Man. man. Oh, oh fuckers! Right. Now we're just gonna watch you, Kelsey. For we are so sorry Damn about it. that. Yeah, sorry, Kelsey. <laughs> Where's Antler Man in that, towards the end of that? Oh, Bryce, this is what started Bryce off in his quest to find Antler Man, <laughs> and we One never saw him in. again. <laughs> Shit. Okay, so, she was home from college for the summer. It was a bright, clear, hot day. My mom and I were on the home stretch of a five-mile walk, and we were deep into conversation. Both of us tend to be long-winded, and at this particular point in the walk, it was her turn to monologue. Very few streets in my hometown have sidewalks, and my mom was walking nearest the curb. That meant that when I would turn to look at her, the rolling field of soybeans behind her was also in my line of sight. While she was faced toward me, she saw a background of houses and yards. Okay, great. We can all picture that. Now, I don't mean to brag, but when I get hot, my face and neck get red and splotchy. (laughs) (laughs) So at this point, (laughs) oh my gosh, so vain, Kelsey. So at this point, I probably splotchy woman, please. (laughs) That's hilarious. And at this point, it probably looked like I was midway through a medical crisis in the Missouri summer heat. But we were almost home, and I was fully engaged in whatever we were talking about. I turned to look at my mom, and then behind her, I saw it. It was black and about the size of a large house cat. It reared up from the foliage about two and a half feet and then slipped back down under the six inches of leaves as quickly as it came. For the size of it, it didn't look like it should be able to completely disappear. It was too big. But the problem, the thing that separated it from every other encounter I've had with wild things on walks is that this creature was completely devoid of dimension. In the full sun of the day, there was no shine of fur in the light, there was no shadow underneath it, and there were no distinguishing features to be seen, such as a face or even seeing the legs move in front of the body. It was purely black, but I could feel it looking at me nonetheless. I don't even think that the dense leaves around it rustled, but it happened quickly, so I can't be sure. My face went completely white, so much so that my mom stopped mid-sentence to ask, what was the... what was wrong? I can't (laughs) emphasize enough how hard it is to stop either one of us from talking when we're on a roll. All I could really muster at first was something in the beans. She looked over. (laughs) You know there's a problem in the beans. (laughs) When you see a black shadow creature in there. She looked over, but any trace of it was completely gone. We crossed the street to walk on the other side just to be safe because she could see how shaken I was. As I've gotten older, my opinions on, on the paranormal and etc. have shifted. As I learn, I consider myself a skeptical believer. But one of the things I'm sure about are that there are energies or vibes that are real and you should listen to your intuition. I've been scared plenty of times in my life, but on very few occasions have I felt terror. And I can tell you, when I saw that thing, whatever it was, I felt terror. Luckily, I never saw it again. Kelsey. 
You know what? I'm all in with this girl. Okay, cool. Because I, I think she's super articulate, and I like the way she described herself. I would say that I'm a skeptical believer, and um, yeah, I think she saw that, and it sounds crazy scary. <laughs> sounds like one of your shadow creatures. Mm. Yeah, it does. We get a lot of those on the on the on the listener files. We get ghosts, ghostly grandparents, mm-hmm. and shadow creatures. I wonder if it was just a, like a a little interdimensional blip or something or a little glitch in the matrix so to speak something yeah Yeah. what do you think kev not to be less than fun but i think she may have seen her uh, run-of-the-mill bean cat (laughs) (laughs) bean cat yeah Yeah. i've heard of those they're big too from eating Mm -hmm. all them beans they just pop up Mm -hmm. dark as the night Keep looking for bean cat. Me looking for bean cat. <laughs> no, it sounds. Uh, yeah, it it does fully smack of uh, honesty. I'm all in mm-hmm. too, and uh, not that anyone's dishonest, but it doesn't feel like um, someone who has their brain has kind of retold the story enough that they're that's kind of accidentally adding to it. It just, mm-hmm. just yeah, I think she saw a crazy. It's weird enough too that it's not like. I saw this thing that so many everyone else saw. It's yeah. like I saw this weird thing. I can't quite explain it. Like what if it, it's a Sasquatch? There's enough confusion in it that makes me makes it very believable to me. What if be it's a little a Sasquatch, Sasquatch. He's tiny because he's been eating only. He didn't get meat. He just eats beans. <laughs> Soy beans. Right. Yeah. He's a vegetarian Sasquatch. Yeah. He's had Sasquatch. too much estrogen. It's possible. possible. I mean, this sounds like yeah. an interdimensional creature for sure. The way that she was talking about the light not being yeah. right, that he didn't belong in the same physical space. Mm-hmm. Like light wasn't. Like almost as though he'd been photoshopped, and maybe in. didn't even rustle the leaves. Yeah, right. I think kind of creepy. Yeah, I think he popped in. Riley, you're leaning image. in over there. What are you? What are you thinking? Oh, it's just the chair's not very comfortable. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one we made Kevin sit in on last week's episode the whole time and be quiet. <laughs> Um, you want to take this next one? Sure. Uh, this one's from Mike. Is that right? No, no, no. That's that was supposed to be me reading it, but now we've traded off. So okay. just say uh, pretend Mike says Bryce. That's your that's that's your. Line. Oh, I got you. Right. Yeah. Okay. I got you. This one is called Orson Welles and the Mysterious Meteorite. Um, it says, "Hi, Bryce and Michael, and everyone in the BCC." Hi, I'm Orson Welles. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's writing. me, Orson Welles. Oh, shit. <laughs> Trust me, everything I am writing is to the truth. Have right. you seen <laughs> <laughs> Looking for Orson. Um, just listened to the second listener email episode and wanted to add my story to one of the most bizarre things I have ever seen. Who is this? Sorry. This is uh, Orson it's called Orson Welles and the Mysterious Meteorite, and it's from, I'll skip ahead to find out. It's from Irene. From Irene. Um, Orson Welles used to appear frequently on the Merv Griffin show, often with some kind of magic trick. One evening, I was watching TV, and an early promo for Merv's show came on. Orson Welles was instructing viewers to get a clock or some other kind of mechanical object that had stopped working. Hold it up to the TV and prepare to be amazed. As luck would have it, I not only had one of those big wind-up alarm clocks, it was broken. Waking me is a perilous existence. That clock had hit the floor a time or two, and if you wound it all the way, it would run for a few minutes and then stop, the perfect tool for this experiment. I was excited to see what would happen, but first, the scientific method. Step one, check that the clock has stopped. Yep. Check, step two, hold clock up to TV. Nothing. Um, turn the page here. Step three, wind clock. Ran a few minutes, then stopped. Step four, hold clock up to TV. Still nothing. Step five, wait, wait the hours until Merv, or how slowly time passes when you are waiting to be amazed by a stopped clock. Okay. Um, At last, there was Orson with a heavy box. He was talking about what was in the box. He couldn't, wouldn't say much, just that it was extraterrestrial. I was inches from the TV screen, clock in hand. Orson gave me the instruction about getting a broken clock or mechanical object, took a strange stone out of the box, and told viewers to hold the mechanical piece up to the screen. I did, and the clock began to tick. Orson talked for a while about how he really couldn't talk about the stone, but said there was a research going on regarding its curious powers. I have never heard a word about this since, but I swear it happened. I have no idea how this worked. I think I had cable at the time, but uh, how the magic juju of the rock came from the rock through the air in Merv's studio into the camera, recording devices, local TV, cable air, and then through my TV and into the clock, I haven't the faintest idea. And the clock? It continued to run, so long as I kept it wound. 
One day, I forgot to wind it, and it went back to its former state. Next time I moved, it became landfill. Like I said, waking me is a perilous existence. You'd think something with this kind of power would be well-known and a boon to people everywhere with broken clocks and appliances. But Googling, Googling it only produces one lonely link that I could find, and she attaches right there. And um, I went to that link, and there's really nothing there at right. all. It's like somebody on a poster <clears throat> on a comment board going, hey, does anybody remember this happening? There's like no article about it. Whoa. Interesting. What do you suppose it could be? And is this story being suppressed by a cabal of new clock and appliance sellers, or is it even more subversive? subversive? Love your show, Irene. Ooh, thanks, wow. Irene. That's an interesting That's a cool magic thing. trick. Yeah. Yeah. So he said he had a meteorite that would fix mechanical objects. And then it did for some people. Yeah. For her. For Irene. And now there's no trace of it online. I mean, Very that's strange. weird. I don't know. Maybe she dreamt it. But I don't think she did. But yeah, I haven't actually. I need to sit and Google and see what comes up. Yeah, which I, I, if... I did go to that link and it didn't really. Mm. I don't know if she. I don't think she posted it, but it was somebody else like having a memory of this ha stunt happening on the TV show. Well, it'll be, it'll be cool because if you have any listeners who were around then and who did that, maybe they'll say, I did that too. That's great. Let's put out an APB for listeners. If yeah. you remember sure. this uh, Orson Welles appearance on the Merv Griffin show, we want to hear about it and mm. if it fixed anything in your home. Well, Orson Welles, a notorious figure in the world of, you know, kind of aliens and all that jazz. As you know, he did his popular New York recording of War of the Worlds, I think it was in the 30s, mm -hmm. um, which caused such a mass hysteria countrywide that uh, um, they enlisted uh, uh, what was called what, what's known as the Brookings Report, which was done by uh, the CIA, I believe, and a panel of government officials, which they found that uh, um, this was kind of the baseline study for them that, like, you know, if, if the public does get a hold, of, of what's out there and that what we have or supposed extraterrestrial visitation that the shit could hit the fan and so the brookings uh brookings report became uh, a big thing which would basically said like you, you you often say mike you know um that it would cause like a mass hysteria if, if we actually the government did disclose everything they know well i actually i don't know if it would cause mass hysteria what i think it would do is if the government came out and admitted that aliens are visiting us the first question we would say is where do they come from and if they have an answer to that the follow up question would be and what are you doing to protect us from from these aliens yeah and the answer is not a whole hell of a lot because right. they can't can do. they yeah. they outclass our well, technology right. and that's why and then at that point the government becomes irrelevant because mm -hmm. the whole point of having a federal uh, government is to protect the right. United States. Is to right. any entry any central government. Their primary role is to protect uh, citizens from outside invaders. Got it. Well, and so and, and that's why they kind of laid out a step by step plan in this so called Brookings report that said, you know, um, what we should do is deal out, dish out little by little information that so that the public could get acclimated to the fact that God. we are being visited. It's just and, assuming uh, yeah. everyone's an idiot. No, yeah. and, and, I, and I do think it would cause hysteria. For some people, it crisis of faith, you know, it's a huge mm -hmm. paradox for a lot of people. But I think, I think that is the main reason the government will not admit it is because the illusion of their power is greatly, greatly diminished. Well, and, and then, it's hard to keep control. If, yeah, exactly. If people are like, because at well, that point you're like, I just can't. Well, then believe what the hell are you guys doing? It's hard for me to fathom. I mean, almost everyone doesn't. It's hard for me to fathom that so many people are like, "There's no way." To me, it seems like, duh. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously. Yeah, and I almost feel I've sometimes I get the sense that like you know the so-called Brookings Institute uh, Brookings report is being implemented because you know. As the years go by, especially right now, more and more breadcrumbs are being lay, uh, laid out across the way. Like, you know, just, you know, that New York Times article, the popularity of ancient aliens on TV. It's just like more and more um, the media is getting hold of these things. U UFOs are being spotted and and uh, people's video are being released. And it's, it's almost as if, uh, you know, um, they are kind of implementing that, you know. Mm -hmm. the, go the government seems to kind of 
relinquish little bits and pieces of what they have, especially through the mm -hmm. Freedom of Information Act. And even though a lot of that still gets blacked out when it uh, involves UFOs, but very interesting stuff. Yeah. Am I am I remembering this wrong, or wasn't that part of Hillary's plan? Is she was gonna? Yeah, she was it? a big proponent yeah. of, of getting to the bottom of uh, of whatever this UFO thing was, because her husband Bill Clinton had obviously tried to do it as well, but he got um, he got stonewalled. Right. Um, you know, so there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of kind of conspiracy in that whole world. And uh, yeah, Hillary was going to get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, she never got the chance. Trump will do it. <laughs> 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 Kevin, what was your favorite uh, show growing up? Did you ever have a television program fix any broken item in your home? Mm -hmm. No. Um, Dukes of Hazard didn't do shit for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dukes of Hazzard. I did, I too. I love that show. show yeah. yeah, that was one of mine, too. <laughs> Just some good old boys. Yeah, looking for no Bigfoot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a couple modern-day Bigfoot. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break, yeah. and when we come back, we got more mail. Yes. More mail. <laughs> Sweet. And we're back, Bigfoot Collectors Club. It's the Listener Files episode with Edie Patterson and Kevin Kirkpatrick. Um, I have one coming up from Victoria. Hello, my name is Victoria, and I am a 32-year-old licensed professional counselor. I live near Shreve, the Shreveport, Louisiana area. First of all, I love this podcast. I found it through listening to the Craig Ferguson Show, and it is awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Craig Ferguson Show. Not Craig Ferguson, but the show. <laughs> this we, is how rumors get started. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I did his uh, final episode last month in May. Okay, here we go. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I've always had an interest in the paranormal. I would like to share a few of my experiences. Well, you can only share one. I'm sorry, Victoria. <laughs> When I was 14, I was on a vacation with my mother and grandmother in the Myrtles Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana. It was one of the most haunted houses in America. I pointed at Kevin because I visited the Myrtles Plantation when we were filming a little movie called oh. Beauty and the Briefcase. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we were in New Orleans, and I, th I think you had left town by this point. Yeah, I was gone at that point <coughs> when you went to see that plantation. I don't know if H. Duff's went with me or not, but I definitely, maybe it was Matt. I think Matt and I went out, Matt Dallas and I went out and saw it. But it was, it's insane and super... Uh, I mean, very chilling because these plantations, they would be, they would, they'd run like, a, they sold these lots that were like long, skinny lots of lands that would back up to the river. And so basically you had these long, miles long, narrow uh, plots of land so they could get as many plantations going along the river as possible. And the Myrtles Plantation, obviously it was a, you know, slave owners there. And it was really eye-opening because, um, I did not know uh, that just how many slaves were on these plantations. There were basically cabins uh, for the slaves that ran like a mile, like miles. Like it was like a tiny, there would be this, there's this big mansion. And then behind the mansion <laughs> across the field, there is like a small city. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, it's insane. It's so shocking. It's so shocking. Um and but I think Myrtle's uh, also one of it's famous for some of the early like Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, all those stories. The Song in the ha South stuff was those stories were being passed around here because it was a Cre I think there was a lot of Creole um, slaves there, and there's a lot of that tradition. Those stories made their way over to America, um, and that was one of the original. Uh, places that those stories were told, which is also really interesting. But man, it's it's uh, it's pretty shocking. So, uh, that being said, <clears throat> that uh, it's one of the most haunted houses in America. One of the most infamous stories of the house is about a slave woman murdering two small daughters of the owner. Yikes. I had always wanted to visit this place, so I had my mother take a picture of me in front of the house. This was back in the days of film cameras, and I noticed she appeared to be confused while taking the picture and kept looking up from the camera. She took the picture, and I thought nothing of it. Later, she told us that she had seen a little girl looking through a second-story window, but she only saw her through the camera viewfinder and not when she looked up. Oh, that's weird. When she looked through the viewfinder again, the little girl was there. When the picture was developed, there is clearly a little girl looking through the upstairs window, smiling. 
We later learned that there are no small children allowed upstairs. Unfortunately, the picture has since been lost. What? Come on. Uh, I went back to Myrtle's when I was 15 years old with my aunt, and we spent the night there on Halloween night of 2001. I went to bed very late because I stayed up talking to other visitors and taking pictures of the grounds. When I got in bed, my aunt was already asleep. I had not gone to sleep. I had just laid down. There was suddenly a weight on the bed as if a child had climbed onto it. The mattress moved, but we were still. I woke my aunt, my auntie, my auntie, and it stopped as soon as she woke up. She didn't experience it. Later on, I learned the room we stayed in had been the nursery of the two little girls who died. (laughs) Sorry, I'm laughing because I'm like, what the fuck are you doing staying there? The Myrtle's Plantation (laughs) is fascinating and a very haunted place. If you haven't been, I recommend it. Thanks. She recommends staying there in the room where the little girls were killed. Oh, boy. Yai, 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 yai. See, I'm not the type of person to really subject myself to that kind of stuff. I'm like, you know, I, I'll i pass by the car, maybe go on the outside tour, but I'm not going to spend a night in some place like that. No. I mean, and especially it's just, a plantation. Yeah, no. it's no just way. got too much bad history. Uh-uh. Yeah. I do not want anything to do with that. Mm-mm. Now, I did go, I mean, this one is very well um, preserved from the Historical Society. So it is, I mean, it's like, you know, they are, it's like a, it's a fascinating artifact to yeah. go check it out. I'm glad I did and I learned some stuff. But yeah, I don't want to spend the night in a haunted nursery. I just, I, I got a very like vivid imagine it, like when she was like, I could see, you know, looking through that and like going like bringing the camera down and like that moment of just like, what am I experiencing? You know, seeing that creepy thing through a viewfinder. That would be just weird. How do you lose that picture? I mean, I don't yeah. know. If I had a ghost picture, I would not. Lose. I would publish it. Yeah, I would at least frame it. Yeah. And this, I don't know, the whole, oof, it all just gives me bad feelings. But my, I immediately go like, what the fuck was that man doing to that woman? Because she obviously oh, had to send yeah. a message. Uh, and like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there, I mean, who knows? Who knows like what she was dealing with or if she was mentally ill or whatever. But you know she was not being treated great. No, <laughs> no. It's, it's tragic. The whole thing uh, is awful. Uh, yeah. Oh, I hate it. Uh, Kevin, any famous or favorite spots you visited in New Orleans? <laughs> <laughs> I went to the uh, I went to the above ground graveyard. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I didn't go to that. How was mm-hmm. that? Was that spooky? Yeah, it's trippy. It's um, it's yeah, it's weird. You don't get spooked out too much. Um, Does like a well, graveyard spook you out? Medically, I'm unspookable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's weird not having that layer of earth between you and the dead. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're walking around, and they're all just like. Couple inches of concrete, and that's yeah. it. You know, so yeah, it was seemed. Uh, Is that the one that's in? Um, what's the one that's in? Uh, uh, Easy Rider. Is that the graveyard where they're like tripping acid in Easy Rider? That scene. Yeah, um, it's one like that. I'm not sure if that's in New Orleans. It might. I don't be. know. What's the point of an above ground graveyard? Well, what? they the the it's so close to sea level they can't bury people there. Oh, yeah, I think it. it's actually below. Uh, the city of New Orleans is actually below sea mm-hmm. level, and so, yeah, so um, they put bodies above ground so that if it flooded or anything, the body the not that it would ever would, flood. No, but uh, not that that would ever happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one. Uh, uh, Bryce, you want to take it? Sure. This is uh, this one is called Shadow Figure and Ghost Jeep. And it's from Roger and Denise. Oh, you skipped one. Did I? Yes. Oh, okay. My creepy story. Oh, got it. Okay. My bad. Let me go back. Do, 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 do. What if we had Kevin read one? Yeah, Kevin, Kevin you want to read, read, read this one? Oh, I'd love to. Here. Okay, Kevin, yeah, right here. Let's change right. it up a little we'll bit. We'll start at the top. Yeah. My creepy we story. One. Yeah. You guys messed up too many times, and now yeah, he's giving me the reins. Yeah, hell yeah. Welcome to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Which one in. am I reading? Uh, my right creepy story. From the very top. It says, hey, Bryce and Michael. Well, no. Yeah. The creepy story was the oh, page oh, before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, shadow figure and ghost jeep. No. God. Oh, Everybody, you you're about? fired. Don't make me Look, regret this decision. Flip Kevin. the page over, Kevy boy. It starts on the Let bottom read of the ghost page. jeep. No, oh, it's once last. Well then, well, then don't hand me the wrong page. There you go. It starts down there. Okay. This is getting awkward. Tensions are wrong. Well, you said top of that page, and top of that page wasn't the beginning of anything. Okay. <laughs> Just look at his handsome face. Okay. Tell him you're sorry. <laughs> Tell each other you're sorry. This one's called My Creepy Story. Thank you. Hey, Bryce and Michael. 
There's the page. L- love the show. <laughs> God. I'm a believer in the supernatural from my experience in the past. My first ever experience with the unexplained was when I was about eight or nine. I had very long hair on this day. I was wearing it in uh, a coiled up in pigtails kind of thing. And I was. Don't g- add words. <laughs> Yeah, do, why trying you, to cover my tracks because I, I must have read it wrong. <laughs> we forgot that Kevin can't read. Did it honestly <laughs> say I had Kevin. very long hair on this day? Yeah, I oh, had okay. very long hair and, and on this on day, this oh, day interesting. I was wearing it in coiled up in pigtails. That's her typo. Uh, <laughs> we both messed up, she and I. I was going up the steps towards my room and <laughs> stopped last in the hall- files episode ever. <laughs> I was going up the steps towards my room and I stopped in the hallway thinking I heard someone. All of a sudden, she said all of the sudden, I felt someone drop their hard oh hand on my shoulder. <laughs> I felt someone drop their hand on my shoulder from behind, but when I turned around no one was there. What made the situation even drop. more strange was that as soon as I felt the hand leave my shoulder, my coiled pigtail on that side unraveled and fell on my shoulder. Whoa. <laughs> Trying to make sense of this, I looked to see if anyone was around, but all my sisters and mom, all her mom, were <laughs> downstairs and no one else was in the house. To this day, I think this was a spirit of sorts trying to make connect somehow. <laughs> okay, I, my first instinct is to rip Mabel a new asshole for the grammar. No, don't. <laughs> not a grammar. I'm not podcast. going to. I'm just playing with <clears throat> Mabel. Um, she went. She was typing fast and passionately, and she made some mistakes. Sure. I have a few more stories of things I've seen and that I would love to share with you guys if interested. Mabel, I love the Ooh. name Mabel. I like a coiled uh, up pigtail. She's a little sensuous in describing her <laughs> her pigtails coiled up and <laughs> bouncing down upon her bare shoulders. Right. But she never said bare shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> she sure did. <laughs> in Kevin's edit of her letter, she will. Oh. We, I it's imagine that hand with bare on the shoulder thing <laughs> yeah. that we've heard time mm-hmm. and again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yes, Mabel, we are interested. Send more letters. Please. Yeah, send us yes. more. <laughs> what so? What a creepy little like uh, move for this ghost. Like blunk, and then <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. seems like a kid. Did she have like, a ribbon in pig- her hair? How did that get? I want to know if like something how it was coiled up. Well, she, Edie, what is coiled? Is she saying something that we don't get? Is well, that, she might have like if, she had, like Princess Leia like braids. Leia. Or yeah, if she had a pigtail anyway, then you could just like twist it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, almost like a Leia thing. Uh huh. So it would yeah. be if you pulled on it, it'd be easy. It'd probably pop it in. Down into a well, it would do that interesting thing if it was already twisted up. Get on that mic, Edie. and they pull and they there pull part of it. it. Yeah, it would do an almost like spring loaded, like bleep, 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 bleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which I bet felt weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, oh boy, there I don't know. Mm. Keep your hair down. That's what the ghost was trying to tell you. Mm. Okay, now this one is called... I had my audition for being a reader. Girl. Yeah, you lost that <laughs> job. So Sorry. I need reading glasses, by I, the way. At some there. point, I would love to try to beat him. All right, oh, yeah. you want to take oh, this yeah. next one? Great. Ooh, this one's called Shadow Figure and Ghost Sheep, Ooh, ghost ghost Sheep and it's from Roger and Denise. This take is the one away. I take was... this one, Edie. That God wanted me to read. I know. I don't know. <laughs> would let me. I don't know. You're, I just like hearing you say coiled pigtail mm-hmm. over and over again. Mm-hmm. The coiled pigtail. The coiled The mystery of the coiled pigtail. Off my small tan shoulder. <laughs> okay. this, one, this one is from Roger and Denise. <laughs> A nice couple. <laughs> hey, Michael and Bryce. I have a two for the price of one deal for you today. Ooh. Two great stories about encounters that were experienced by my significant other. I really hope to hear them on your future Listener Files episodes, exclamation point. And will you ever. (laughs) Wish granted. Keep up the awesome podcast. Love you guys. Number one. Now, this is by Roger. Shadow figure in bedroom. Hello, exclamation point. My name is Roger. I live in Southern California, my parents' home. The home we live in is... Wait, is Roger an old lady? (laughs) 
<laughs> just he go could be. Just okay, go let's you got to do a Roger voice. <laughs> okay, this okay. You got your Denise voice. You got to do Roger. Number one, shadow figure in bedroom. Hello. My name's Roger. I live in Southern California in my parents' home. The home we live in is first occupied by my family. The location does not have a haunted past or history that I know of, dot, dot, dot. One night, I was asleep in my room with my nephew who was spending the night with me. I was asleep in the outer part of the bed slash mattress. He was sleeping on the inner part of the bed. I was suddenly awoken by what felt like my nephew walking towards the edge of the bed. I then looked up and saw a shadow figure standing on the corner of the bed. Assuming it was my nephew, I figured I should grab him before he falls. I then reached to grab him around his waist to lay him back down or ask why he's awake, but my arm went completely through the shadow. Ooh. The figure appeared to be solid, but was not. As my arm went through the shadow, that's when I began to retreat back down and then felt my nephew's <laughs> foot and realized he was clearly asleep next to me this whole time. Uh, uh, I then laid back down, all the while staring at the shadow figure that was standing at the foot of my bed for what felt like hours while looking directly at it. Trying to make sense of this encounter, I noticed a very slight, gentle, sway-like movement. I eventually fell asleep, but never took my eyes off of it, and it never moved from that spot. Weird. Apologies, sir, that Edie, Edie made you sound like such a creep. <laughs> you can't read a story about an uncle sleeping with his nephew in that voice. In a classic molester voice. <laughs> That's a, that voice sounded like a cool guy. I reached for my small tanned nephew to lay his bare shoulders down on the bed. Oh, my goodness. Well, we just lost two listeners. Wow. <laughs> no, this Denise is going to love this voice for Wait, her. Wait, real quick, Don, I yep. want to talk about this. Great. Okay, so if he thought it was... His, I'm assuming his nephew's very young. If yes. you could run out. So he's got a, like a three-year-old in there. Because and he thought the nephew was like standing Going to fall the bed. off the bed. Yeah. Right. So does that mean the shadow... I want to know if the shadow entity was one of these three-foot shadow entities, like the one you saw yes. in your house, CD, that you described last week on oh, the show. Oh, God, I didn't think It would think have of to that. be because... It, it, he wouldn't have mistaken a, for a child. For a child, <gasps> right? What if? What if? What if the boy's shadow was trying to get out while he the boy was sleeping? What if it was the boy's shadow escaping and or running? Soul. Yeah, but think about that. <clears throat> the boy's black shadow. Soul. Yeah. <laughs> what if yeah. when you sleep, your shadow tears itself away from your body and goes running around? Ooh. Like Peter Pan style. Yeah, that's creeping me out right now. His that's arm almost, going through it is real creepy. It's almost as scary yeah, as creepy. the wig man of the Groundlings. Anybody want to hear a joke? Yeah, that's weird. I love that he stared it down all the way until he fell back to sleep. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I would have been. I would not have been able. I would have freaked out. But as he, as I was reading this, I thought about that thing when he said that he laid back down. That's my first thought is I go like, how can you lay back down? But I've experienced this before yeah. where I'm so scared of a noise or of something and it's like the adrenaline goes backwards mm. and it's you're so amped and scared that very quickly you're like, oh. and you're like knocked out. Have you ever had that? No. Where you're too afraid to get out of your bed, but then you're just like, it's morning. I will be wide awake until morning. You think? <clears throat> oh yeah. I know what you're talking about. Like sometimes I'll just be like, I'm just gonna go back to bed. If I mm -hmm. like, if I feel something strange or I hear something, I was just like, you know, maybe don't want to like mentally deal with that. You know? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. ah, I'm not up for this right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll deal with it on another night. Yeah. And I have done the like that before once in Germany where you're like, I will not sleep. L light will have to come through. What the happened in Germany? I don't know. I We were in some weird area and I just feel like it was like just energetically yeah. jacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not even saying like, this is where some bad Nazi stuff happened. We were in the middle of the country side. I don't know what it was, but it was Very old terrifying. country. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I can't boy. even articulate it. All right, it. so what's Denise's story? Denise, right? Roger and Denise? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number two, ghost jeep. <laughs> Myself and three friends decided to take a trip up to Mount Baldy near the Upland area in Southern California. We were doing some mild hiking in the area around 1 p.m. We spent a majority of our time at the waterfall and lake. 
we decided that we wanted to find a new location to explore. So we began hiking down the street. Da- we began hiking downstream <laughs> alongside the abandoned road. We've never traveled this far. There were several abandoned cars cemented by the rubble. It looked like they'd been there for years. Also metal piping coming out of the ground and walls. It looked as though a highway had fallen and we sim- and was simply abandoned. The time was nearing sundown. <laughs> While still traveling down the road that was semi-intact, we spotted a vintage metal army jeep with no doors or lights traveling up alongside the road. We stopped to look at the vehicle and two guys and two guys were in the jeep. Mm, Want to try that again, Denise? We stopped to look at the vehicle and the two guys in the jeep. The guys in the jeep stared at us and we stared right back. The jeep continued to drive up the road and we lost sight of it as it turned behind some brush. After about five minutes or so, we decided to walk towards the direction of the jeep and let them know there's no opening up on that road. Walking up the road the jeep drove, we approached a massive boulder that caused the road to dead end. With no room to safely travel on or around this road, the jeep completely disappeared. It never passed us again. There are no exits and no ability to off-road in that terrain. And even if they had the room to make a U-turn, they would have passed us coming down. We all remember the two guys in this jeep, and even though in even though it was still daylight, we couldn't make out any significant facial features on them, and they didn't appear recognizable. We were all dumbfounded by what had happened and still cannot explain where the jeep could have gone. Denise and Roger, listeners from Southern California... Oh, oh my ghost mm. jeep. I'm also concerned that these two people live in SoCal, which means they can find me easily and beat me up. <laughs> Why for the from the voices I used to read their, their letters? I think you're okay. They, that was they wonderful. Were endearing voices. Yes. That was yeah. wonderful. God. Ghost Jeep. Ghost, ghost jeep. jeep. Go. Who's got this? Well, the they have no faces. Mm. Because, you know, the face is the would be if you're an alien an and you're like part, trying oh. to fake being human. Oh, you're going would, alien. Mm-hmm. I had that instinct too. The face would be the hardest thing to get exactly right, probably. Mm. You know? Yeah. Not, not or the, you don't not bother. The Jeep. Seems like the Jeep would or be you don't a bother. challenge if you can nail that. Well, I think that it was a, probably a real Jeep, but they knew how to oh. mm-hmm. apparate it where they needed it to go when they reached their... Thing, or maybe there was some kind of maybe they went and got that Jeep to take it back. <laughs> like it was a, a recon, it was like a Craigslist yeah. situation yeah. or something. I think Ghost Jeep. I think they saw some World War II ghost dudes Ooh. driving around. Like, same uh, thing, probably if it's an imprint from back in time. Yeah, it could yeah, be sort yeah, of yeah. out of focus and yeah, face, yeah, faceless. Yeah, yeah. Time echo. You know, mm. uh, did they say were, they were at a, some t- near military base or? I feel like that was said, but maybe it's just like all these cars abandoned on the road. Mm-hmm. Weird. Where is this weird old highway to? Near Mount Baldy, Mount right? Baldy. Yeah. yeah. Near the Upland area. Upland area. Mm. Mount Baldy. I wonder if it, there's a lot of paranormal activity there. I'll Mount Shasta into. has a pretty oh, steep. Oh, Shasta's got really? passages yeah. to the uh, subterranean kingdom there yeah. as well. The so yeah. Lemurians. Wait, what's yeah. that? We need to do a There are tunnels into that. the underground there, Mount Shasta, and they see UFOs fly out, and people get lost. People disappear up up near hiking oh. around the mountain. Right. What is that m- missing for? One one is that? Oh, is that, do a lot of those happen there? I I don't know. I mean, I know what you're talking about. A lot of national parks, people go yes. missing. Hikers, inexplicably, it's very weird. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I th- there are stories of hikers getting lost in the mountain in the mountain hike there, or people being like, I was walking, I turn around, and my buddy was gone. Or they would find themselves lost, and they would think like maybe thirty minutes went by, and like six hours went by, mm-hmm. or something like that. So there's weird activity up in Mount Chasta. That's just a straight shot up uh, Highway 5. Oof. What um, was your connect to uh, Lemuria and uh, Shasta, Riley, you were saying? Oh, that's a deep cut. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a member of the Source family, which is a famous cult from the 1960s. Wow. Oh. And uh, my Source family Hold name. on. What? <laughs> okay. All right. Wait? Here, what? Con- context. Yeah. Uh, I played uh, tablas, which is an in- Indian drum, uh, in a band... With this guy, Jin Aquarian, who was the guitar player in the Source family band. He's he's a friend of mine now. He's right. in his 60s. So he inducted me into the Source family Whoa. and gave me a Source family name. At what age? 
uh, a few years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, which is Telos Aquarian. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's my source family name. Whoa. Uh, Telos is a Lemurian leader. So uh, because the Lemurians are, are tall, blonde, sort of Nordic figures. And sure. I'm that. Yeah. So, <laughs> you are. Uh, so yeah, he, that was the name that he chose for me for my source family name. So T E L O S. Yeah. Yeah. Telos Aquarian. Telos Aquarian. That's, that's uh, me. Lemurians oh. are maybe underground, and there are supposedly tunnels to the underground kingdom. The yeah. land, the land of Mount Shasta. Shasta. Yeah, they live inside Mount Shasta. Shasta, apparently. People have, uh, I guess, uh, met them. Anyway, uh, Jin, he lives up by Shasta also. So Wow. <sighs> what? Whoa. They're supposed to live Why to be very old. Why tell us this? I don't know, just hanging on to it, you know. Just, wow. Uh, you know, it's a now little... I'm questioning everything. That's amazing. And has he ever in, like invited you in there or anything like that? Uh, inside of the secret... Yeah. City in Mount Shasta? Yeah. No, unfortunately. Now, how does it go, like, I, I know there's the land of Mew, and then there's, like, Lemuria, and then there's Atlantis. Does Lemuria predate Atlantis? They were, like, neighbors, I think. There was a neighboring kingdom, I thought. And they but were... I think Lemuria is, like, not real. I don't know. I mean, uh... <coughs> I'll I'm, get not, I'm not sure if I if what I think about it either, but it is a fun thing It's to a believe. fun story. Right. right. <laughs> These beautiful mountain people living for thousands yeah. of years inside of Mount Shasta. Yeah, God, they've is, got it figured out. That's like a <laughs> new age, thousands. turn of the century, yeah. like the previous yeah, century the story I see, that yeah. I think is pretty bullshit, gotcha. but based on some faulty monkey science. So interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get into. I'll, we'll get into it at some yeah. point. I mean, I love. I would definitely want to do Atlantis Peaked because my interest, Atlantis yeah. is fascinating. But uh, yeah, no, I've always been fascinated by uh, Atlantis and, and uh, Lemuria as well. I mean, yeah, there's definitely. A story there somewhere so well apparently there's a piece of living history right here in the studio that we did not know about yeah i'm a late member of the source family that is wild man. shout out so. father yod okay <laughs> all right <laughs> this is getting creepy i'm glad i followed up on that well guys it's another uh deep dive in the mailbag and guess what we need some more mail so it's up to you guys now please email us at bigfoot collectors club at gmail.com with your story of high strangeness uh it's June right now. Uh, Edie, Kevin, you got anything to plug away for people at home? God, no, it's summer break. Yeah. <laughs> summer break. You're yeah, getting maybe. those shoulders tanned. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, what, I don't I don't have anything I'm plugging right now at this second. You guys do anything fun for the summer? Any vacations? I don't know. I just was in Oslo last week. Oh, mm-hmm. well, good for, for a few days. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I saw stuff on your mm-hmm. Instagrams. Mm-hmm. That was oh, fun. you know, if anyone's in the Austin area on uh, Labor Day weekend? I don't know. September. <laughs> yeah, it's Labor it's Day end weekend. of August or beginning of September. Um, uh, Edie and I are taking our little improv group to the festival there. Oh, cool. Edie's also doing a one-woman improv show, which is amazing. Oh, my gosh. One hour, one actress. Improvising a complete show, complete wow. like play or no, no, complete show, one w- woman show, and uh, and then our our group called the Wolf is uh, performing Friday and Saturday night, headlining at this festival. Is it a Austin comedy festival? What is it? Yeah, it's the Out of Bounds Fest. Okay, um, which I've played before. It's just a really cool dude, uh, awesome comedy festival. That's yeah. great. Well, you guys have time to get your tickets and plan your trip to Austin. And go see uh, Edie and Kevin. You definitely should. They are. They are both amazing performers and improvisers, um, so Thanks, have to man. check that out. Um, I'll be up at the Interlock and Shakespeare Fest. Mm. Uh, runs at the end of the month and into the first week of July doing a production of Much Ado About Nothing. Oh, wow. If you're in the Traverse City, Michigan, or Interlocking area, awesome. come see me play Benedict on the old outdoor Sweet. theater boards. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm excited. It's uh, I went to Interlocking for high school. And now they do a professional uh, Shakespeare show every year as part of the larger Interlochen Arts Festival that takes place. So send in the elevator I'll be back doing, down. Yeah, hey, hey. Good for you. Uh, Bryce, you got anything? Yeah, on July 18th, well, July 11th is the premiere of Bobcat Goldthwait's Misfits and Monsters. All right. Uh, We've been hearing that, about this for a long yeah, time. Yeah, so that's on True TV, and I'll be in the second episode, which I believe will air July 18th. So, awesome. uh, Check out the whole season. It should be really good. He wrote, directed, and produced all of them, and it's an anthology series um, that I'm highly looking forward to. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. So uh, look forward to that. That'll be July 18th for my episode. Great. And 
Riley, got any shows coming up? Yeah, my band Spindrift is doing some shows this summer um, all over, so give us a look up. We might be coming to your town. Hey, 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 hey. Hell yeah. Talos. All right, all right guys. This new song called Looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> That we're uh, <laughs> looking for what? <laughs> oh, looking for big 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 yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much. Yes, Wills, Kevin. No, oh, I don't know someone. why you. <laughs> oh, I thought I heard you say something. No, Spotlight. I can't. Though. Kevin, Gosh, what do I want to Kevin, about? what do you want to say? <laughs> oh, guys, it's the Kevin minute. Go. <sighs> Let's just get into. It. <laughs> no, I really have nothing. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you guys next week for another regular episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club. In the meantime, if you want to check out our Patreon campaign and support the show, you can do that over at www.patreon.com backslash Bigfoot Collectors Club. You can find us on all the social media stuff. Um, we love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I want to thank Edie for Definitely. joining us for not one but two episodes. Yeah, Kevin, awesome. Kevin, thank Woo. you for coming back and doing another episode of The L Files. Hell yeah, Kevin. Can't do it without you. <laughs> Always will. Um, <laughs> Uh, Roger and Denise, we're sorry about making fun of your voices. No, uh, Mabel, we're sorry making, making, fun nice of your, making fun of your grammar. No, you guys, we're just teasing. We're all having fun up in the clubhouse. Um, join us uh, next week. Until then, uh, I want to thank Riley Bray, our producer, for all the sounds and engineering that he does. And I want to thank the band Sun Eaters for our song uh, from Come Alone, uh, courtesy of Cod- uh, Lotus Pool Records. Uh, check out their stuff. It's really good. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. In the meantime... Looking for the headphones.